Hello, my name is Kevin Annett Eagle Strongbors, and I'm speaking to you from Canada. This is an appeal to the people of the world and especially to the people of Iran. Canada's Prime Minister Stephen Harper must be brought to trial for crimes against humanity. Barely three years ago, my Aboriginal friend Johnny Bingo Dawson was beaten to death by three Vancouver policemen in the west coast of Canada after he had led occupations and protests outside churches responsible for the death of 50,000 or more Aboriginal children in the Indian residential school system. The official cause of Johnny's death did make no mention whatsoever of his broken nose and shattered jaw. Johnny's fate is an example of how Canada's genocide of native people has never stopped. Last year, at a tribal approved excavation, I held in my hands bits of bone and these small buttons from what appears to be the mass grave of Mohawk Indian children who died at the Church of England Indian School in Brantford, Canada, and who were buried in secret on the grounds of the school. But after we made this historic news of the first excavation of a residential school gravesite in Canadian history, the Canadian media refused to report any aspect of it. Canada is a land of official silence and cover-up when it comes to its own ongoing genocide and the history of that genocide of Native people. With full church and state authorization, for over a century, 100,000 Indian children or more were incarcerated in special internment camps called residential schools, where until 1996, they were gang-raped, tortured, worked to death as slave laborers, sexually sterilized, experimented on, starved to death, and exposed to communicable diseases like tuberculosis and smallpox. Over half of them died in these places. For 20 years, I have documented and made public the details of these crimes, which can be looked at at hiddennolonger.com. And I have watched as the Canadian government and the Roman Catholic, Anglican, and United Churches have evaded justice and covered up their responsibility for the deliberate killing of more than 50,000 children in this infamous system. Prime Minister Stephen Harper is personally implicated in this criminal conspiracy by authorizing an official whitewash known as Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which actually censors survivor statements, minimizes the genocide, ignores the mass grave of these children who died, and actually prohibits the prosecution of the guilty churches and the naming of those responsible for these deaths. Prime Minister Stephen Harper must be made to stand before an international court of justice for this crime. Behind Canada's global image of a humanitarian nation lies the fact that it continues to violate international law with apartheid legislation known as the Indian Act of Canada, which denies Aboriginal people on reservations full citizenship rights. The death rate among Indians is 40 times the national average and Indian children are stolen from their families and cultures in a clear plan of cultural eradication by the government that is just as entrenched as it was during the time of the Indian residential school system. Canada's extermination of Indians is in fact continuing at an ever quickening pace because of the demands of the United States military and corporations for Canada's uranium, water and minerals, much of which lies on Indian territory. That same depleted uranium that slowly tortures and kills the children of Iraq and other Islamic nations is mined on Cree Indian land in northern Saskatchewan, where it first causes the same death among Cree Abor Aboriginal families. Whenever we have confronted these crimes of past or present genocide in Canada, we have faced the same attacks from the government, corporations, and churches responsible. A total of 13 Native activists in our network across Canada have died or mysteriously or being killed outright in the last four years, including homeless men like Johnny Dawson in Vancouver. I believe the only reason I'm still alive is because of the white color of my skin and because of the publicity that our campaign has received around the world. That campaign is now escalating as we have joined with other victims of Roman Catholic Church terror in countries like America, Ireland, England, Italy, and Australia. This month, we are launching an online common law court in which the evidence of these crimes will be presented to panels of citizen judges and jurors and an enforceable verdict will be issued against these institutions. 
We urgently rely on the courts and the people of other nations to help us bring to justice the institutions responsible for the ongoing slaughter of Indigenous people and children. We have served public summonses on Pope Benedict, the Queen of England, Prime Minister Harper of Canada, and other church and state officials. On November 1st, our International Common Law Court of Justice will begin revealing to the world the extent of their crimes against humanity. For the sake of our children, living and dead, and for the victims of the worst genocide in human history, I ask for your help. Please call and work for international economic and political sanctions to be brought against Canada for its genocide of Indians, and for a boycott of all trade and tourism to Canada. Endorse our common law court and give it exposure in your local media. And join us to actively disestablish the Vatican and other churches and institutions responsible for the blood of so many innocent children. And please consult the attached documents and videos that go along with this email. In the name of our common humanity and for justice, I thank you.